many of us who grow up surrounded by the positive mental attitude and uh, you know there's a silver lining on every cloud and you know gold uh, you know at the end of every rainbow there's a little bit of a taboo against complaining and what I want to talk about uh, as someone who read all those books when I was young is the art of effective complaining. Now here's, I think, an important thing just to, to set in mind as a value. There is tremendous benefit to being positive, to looking at the bright side, to finding a workaround, to turning lemon into lemonade. I've done it my whole life. But I also want to say that when an entire country or an entire group of people collude to avoid issues and work around them, uh, i.e. there's a pothole in the road, everyone drives around it, and no one complains and actually makes an issue to see that the road gets fixed. There's also something very selfish in that. There's basically 10,000 people all saying, it's easier for me to do nothing about this and just drive around the pothole. However, it isn't easier for 10,000 people to all be mindful of a pothole when it takes two hours and four dollars of concrete to fill that in. And so I want to say that there's actually a, uh, a selfless and a virtuous aspect to complaint, to protest, when it requires more effort on your individual part to do something you could easily work around in the awareness that one, not everyone can work around it. Two, not everyone can see the pothole coming and some people, you know, are gonna bang their teeth and, and that kind of thing in the in the car or, you know, have have a hot soup spill because they weren't, you know, paying attention. And so what I want to talk about is the art of effective complaining. So there's a couple of rules. One, always go to the top. Don't, in a company in particular, start with a lower level employee. I've never seen anything happen there. Two, specifically outline what the gripe is, how it is hurting the entire constituency. Three, how it is hurting the company with its mission. Four, how it can be solved or less money than the problems it is solving on, it is creating on all sides, uh, and how easy it is to do. Because the vast majority of problems are incredibly, they're actually easier for everyone to solve. There's just a thought bottleneck. And your job as the effective complainer is to bring those detailed nuances to the attention of those involved. So I want to talk to you about uh, an area that this happened with me and uh, one of my favorite companies, AirAsia. And this brings up another thing. I make more of an effort to complain and protest companies I care about than, you know, I don't waste any time with uh, a scammer or something trying to you know, improve their service. That's not their goal. Um, I think it, complaints are effective when people really are on the same side, but where time pressures or budget pressures or attention bandwidth make it appear that you're going head to head. So in Manila, uh, where I've spent a fair amount of time this, this year flying in and out of, the terminals are 45 minutes apart. So any airline sending someone a, you know, an, an itinerary needs to have the terminal information where that flight is departing from. And in Manila, it's kind of broken up by different airlines and 
domestic and international, and it's, it's not, um, anyway, it's not cut and dry. And there's four terminals. So uh, I get my terminal email, well, I get my email from AirAsia, and I'm about to leave for the airport, and I'm scanning the email, and it doesn't say what terminal. This is concerning. If I go to the wrong terminal, I'm gonna miss my flight. I click Manage Booking. That's the only link that seemed there. I look, there's no terminal information. Um, I click another page, it says, poof, we're sorry, this page isn't here. Uh, I stumble around the site for about 10, 15 minutes and find, you know, domestic Air Asia flights from Manila are from this terminal. And I think that's a pretty safe bet. So I go, but I can't remember how I got there. And I'm concerned that I'm going to spend another 15 minutes the next time stumbling around. So I go to leave feedback. And I'm signed into AirAsia. And I click feedback and it says, what's your name? And I was like, what do you mean, what's my name? You know who I am. I'm signed in. And they want to waste about 10 minutes of my time filling in repeat contact and what's this about and what and, and what's your itinerary number. And it's like... This is a joke. So, as I say, following rule number one, don't deal with lower level employees. They, they don't have the authority and they don't have the mindset to calculate. I calculated that this is hurting Air Asia's core competency because core competency for every business in a transportation business, it's time. Can we save people time that's why people fly. Get people there on time. Manage your time effectively. Help you catch your flight. The core competency is time. And they've just wasted 85% of my time reading boilerplate about international and national baggage and da da da. So I make a, a detailed recording of every time wasted that hurts the airline, that hurts me that's insulting, that's irritating, and completely unnecessary. When I say unnecessary, with a bit of different programming, it, all of this disappears. It's not like it's costing $10 more per flight or something to make any of these changes. So I have my assistant find the email of the CEO of AirAsia and the chief of executive, and I send this recording to both of them saying you've you know you're one of my favorite com companies I fly you in part because your efficiency and you've just wasted a lot of my time unnecessarily unnecessarily and there's easy ways to improve so that email then gets uh, Tony responded thanks I, and and sends it to his um, uh, his chief web designer who comes back with some reasons why the terminal information isn't there that don't seem valid to me. So I email back and say, look, um, if that's the case, then you need to solve it this way, not at my expense taking 15 minutes and all this circuitous routes. Second, you haven't addressed the other four issues of wasted time in my email. And I keep the CEO in the loop. Uh, next email I get back is terminal information will be added uh, to, you know, and so now my emails will have the terminal information boldly displayed. Great. See, because this is not just for me. This is affecting thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of passengers every year who are having the same issue. Two, they're working on a new UI, and three, uh, I'm invited to, to coffee with the chief, you know, the chief web, uh, you know, designer for, uh, they're going to send me the new UI to test out on behalf of passengers, um, and give some feedback before it goes public. So this is admittedly taking some of my time. I've paid my assistant, uh, $20 to find the email address. I've uh, emailed and followed up. But there's a, 
I feel it's potent time because if tens of thousands of passengers are saving an average of five minutes, that's 50,000 minutes a year that people can be doing something more intelligently with going back into circulation, hopefully being used to spend time with people's families and relax and not have such a high stress life. So this is an example of effective criticism and I mentioned it because I've actually been surprised. I've been so focused on being positive for most of my life and understanding and just, you know, avoiding and working around, which we can all easily do so many of these problems, that I have spent almost no time uh, using the power of complaint, of education, of, of request, and of protest. And what I'm finding is that the very best companies, the very best leaders, the most responsible individuals are appreciative, responsive, respectful, and that things actually happen. Um, in this year, where ba basically what happened is I, I had it. There were just too many things going wrong uh, to, quote, stay positive. And I started complaining and realizing what a gift this was giving to everyone else. Um, and so uh, there's a ferry system in uh, going from Cebu to Panglao Island in the Philippines uh, that's changed their sound system to not blare violent movies into everyone's ears throughout the whole ferry ride. Um, the Pan Pacific Hotel uh, in Manila, my favorite hotel, uh, now has heating as well as cooling capacity in the hotel, uh, has gluten-free bread, has uh, 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 what is it? Uh, vegan dairy you know, options and, and, and soy alternatives, better labeling. They also have uh, a less noxious scent in the lobby. Uh, the Diamond Hotel also has uh, new heating and, and cooling capacity upon request. Uh, for the rooms and uh, several design features and in the Pan Pacific where they had very poor ventilation and the use of varnish and um, it was so toxic even a, as a contractor I'd, go, I'd get in the elevator I asked for a gas mask and so they're, they're uh, implementing new ventilation approaches um, and so all of these things of course help me but they also help the safety and health of the employees. They help the, all the other guests who may not be educated uh, or who being more deferential than we are in America. In Asian culture is just more respectful of you know, whatever anyone else decides to do, that should be the way of it and let's not say anything. But when health, when ongoing convenience for lots of people is effective or is affected it's a real gift to all of them to educate to show alternatives and to really try and partner with the hotel which is not to drive up expenses uh, astronomically but actually show how is the cheapest way that something could be done good luck in your effective complaining and i'd enjoy hearing if you uh, present something effectively in a way that benefits uh, you and everyone else involved.